Hey folks, how's it going? So after Weapon Trial 1, it's time for the Weapon Trial 2. And this one was a little bit stranger. For this one, we're bringing Gloria and Revia to deal damage. We're bringing the Mercenary Guard down here for the attack and defense down, as well as a People Guard to tank the hits. Mostly because Meitha doesn't have the actual OP skill yet. So for this one, he gains Red of Thunder when receiving a ranged attack or after defeating an enemy. So very important that you try and stay alive. And of course he's got the usual advanced immunity. The normal attack locks onto the two farthest enemies to the character, dealing physical damage and inflicting healing received block for three turns. Which is why you kind of want to run the Papal Guard with the little accessory that prevents heal block. Defying Fate, when receiving a ranged attack, decreases the damage the character takes by 40% and inflicts Voltage Shock on the attacker. So, no ranged units in here. And we don't have to worry about this. Furious Wallop deals 340% damage to the farthest enemy within 8 tiles around the unit, knocking them back by 2 tiles and inflicting healing received for 2 turns. The damage is decreased by 10% for each 1 tile between the character and the target, up to 50%. The skill ignores dodge and guarantees that the character is the first to act in the next turn. Now, guaranteeing that the character is the first to act doesn't really matter all that much since you want a god unit in the first place anyway, but there is basically a designated tile or a couple of designated tiles in which you want your tank to sit in order to keep on tanking these. Second skill, Shadows of Fate, physical damage locking onto the two closest target deals 60% damage, ignoring dodge, and inflicts Voltage Shock. Voltage Shock attacks in an cross-shaped area, dealing 60% of the target's HP worth of damage. So you just need to position your units in a way that no two units intersect each other. But even if one of the units intersects one of the others, say your tank, your healer, this is also not the end of the world. Again, it's only 60% HP as damage. Lastly, Smashing Comet deals 60% Calamity damage to all enemies in a 3x7 area right in front, detonating all the Comet's debris within range, while also knocking the targets back for tiles and summoning 3 more debris. This one we will have to go a little bit deeper into detail later, once we actually see the Comet's debris spawn. So first thing first, we're just going to move towards the boss, protect our tank, we begin by taking down as many of these little debris as possible, because otherwise our units might get knocked into them, or they just lose some maneuverability, which we will need later down the line. The first attack is going to hit Rosetta, sorry, Samantha, as well as the Papal Guard, but thankfully Samantha revives herself. So this is the general area in which you want to keep your healer and tank. The tank is 5 to 6 tiles away from the enemy. And even if they get pushed back 2 tiles, they are not falling from the side here. They are not going to take damage and at worst, they are just going to end up down here and they can just walk back. Meanwhile, Samantha can just still heal them with her passive too. Turn 1, we start by trying to deal a little bit of damage, since everyone is in here. Now he's just going to charge up the Furious Wallop. And the Warhorn actually brings some really nice debuffs. Uh, judgment, that's from the little tank. Another 20% damage reduction. And a nice 60% damage taken. Rebia is going to have a field day with this. Again, she's the one that deals the most damage. Uh, you want to use the Warhorn whenever you have the chance. There's our Wallop, only 2k damage, and of course the guard is still alive. Both he moves first, casting Shackles. Okay, so uh, Rebia has a free axe near her. The little guard over here might hit Samantha, 
but again it's not that big a deal, it's only 60% of his own HP. And like this, he doesn't even hit Samantha anymore. I do appreciate the help into clearing the rest of the stage though. Uh, now he's going to charge up the AoE push, which is why we want to move all our units away from the center. I uh, kind of wish he would show the area on the ground like the first mage. But even if he doesn't, you need to remind yourself that on turn 3 he's going to do this push. Thankfully, it doesn't deal that much damage, so you can even keep some of your characters onto him. And you might also want to do that, because there's not enough time otherwise to try and avoid everything, take as little damage as possible. You need to be a little bit aggressive, because this one needs to go down. And needs to go down fast. So, the little summons down here. They reduce defense by 20% for all enemies within 5 tiles, they can be stacked, and they explode after receiving Calamity attacks, dealing piercing damage equal to 80% HP to all enemies within one tile. These only count as stage hazards, so if you kill them, they do not give you Devil stacks, which is why it's useless to bring Devil Tarots into this, and at the same time, you can kind of sort of keep on avoiding damage, so it doesn't even matter if you leave them up. I've tried a couple of times, but whenever I tried clearing this stage of these, I always ended up running out of time, so for this run, I just tried ignoring them for the most part. So now that he's done DOE and summoned these things, he's going to hit our tank once again, but this is also a nice opportunity for us to go and deal some damage, so Warhorn and we charge. The Wallop, once the guard has the immunity skill up, basically does nothing. <laughs> Shackles on fate on these two, so now we just have to reposition them in a way that they don't teach each other. Again, even if Samantha takes a little bit of damage, it's only 60%, it doesn't matter. Once more, we get out of the way, and we're just going to let him do the AoE push and clear these two things down here. Or, well, one, since he's only going to hit one. Maybe I can just sit there and take damage, 1k, it's nothing, it doesn't matter. Again, invulnerable on the people guard. And we go on dealing some damage. Even in this situation, the people guard is technically one tile further away, so he's always going on the people guard. This might be a bit of an issue, so we're going to try and clear them out. And again, even if Samantha and Revia take some damage here, it doesn't matter. From 10, we're going to move out of the way and heal back up. And turn 11 is going to be yet another damage dealing turn. So I gave the urgent order to Samantha to fill everyone's life back up, and now there's a triple attack on the enemy. You need to try and aim for these, 
because there's very few chances like this. 14k damage and that one wasn't even a crit. Round 12, double shackle onto two units, even though there's three at the same distance. And once again, we are only really going to move one. Uh, thankfully, when the little debris explode, they only deal damage in the very closest area to them. So even if they're just bunched up down here, they basically do nothing. Another urgent order to try and keep us topped off. And we're going to try and be a bit more aggressive here. Because we are one turn off from the clear. So even if he pushes now, we should still be able to go back there and take it down. There we go. Overall, not that bad a clear. I think the hardest one might as well be the Weapon Trial 3, mostly due to the insane AoE damage that boss has. But yeah, once you start leveling up a couple of good units, things flow really, really well. As for the units present, uh, Ravia, always same build, got the Feast Axe in here, no reason to switch the Fancy Hat out. Uh, also, I kind of changed my mind about the resonance between these items, I went with the extra 5% damage. I think it's the most consistent and the extra 15% lifesteal helps a little bit too. For the Terra, Curse of Fortune, because again, the deal summons don't give you double stacks, and another Wheel of Fortune was a pretty good buff on her too. For Gloria, again, double side halberd, another fancy hat with lifesteal, and the second Course of Fortune too. The stats aren't great, but I did want the extra healing from the possible effects from here. Uh, when it comes to the skills, no counter needed, so I went with from defense, and I also took the flag out and exchanged it with Nightly Spirit for the extra attack up, since she's just going to attack enemies from the front. Next one, we got the Papal Guard, who again took the items straight out of uh, Metha with a Newborn Blade, Cooling Powder, which blocks the healing received debuff, as well as another Silence of the Hermit for a 20% damage reduction. Heals wise, Invulnerable is absolutely insanely OP. The 5 turn cooldown is a little bit long, but if you start with this one, you can use it twice and have it not die under the nuke. On top of this, of course, Fancy stands for the shield, heavy armor, and his really nice trait. Sadly, he's only still down to 3 stars, but he worked perfectly fine like this too. Lastly, and by absolutely no means in terms of importance, the Outlaw Guard. Uh, burning Bridges for a little bit of damage, Intimidate for the attack down, as well as Rupture Armor for a physical defense down. Uh, Weapon-wise, I've got a Tuning Hammer which brings yet another Dispel, Evergreen Pendant for a little bit more buffs for him as well. And lastly, Redemption of the Judgment. 10% damage increase, it's always nice to bring. Okay, I guess that's it for the Weapon Trial 2 Stage 10 as well. Again, hopefully you found this helpful, and as always, thanks a lot for watching, and see you guys around soon. Ciao!